Good morning. Am I on? Okay. I'd like to welcome everybody to the annual meeting here uh, in Big Timber. Uh, this is actually, we're reconvening. We called the annual meeting uh, to order and have her at 10 o'clock last Saturday. We recessed at the end of the business session and now are, we are reconvening at this time. At this time, I'd like to call Richard Swartz up to give the invocation. Thanks, Rich, and welcome everybody here. It's good to see you on a beautiful fall day. It's nice to have a fall where the leaves actually turn yellow instead of brown and froze and blow off. So, so yeah, if you join me in prayer. Heavenly Father, good morning. Thank you for this opportunity to gather and fellowship with each other. The last few years have made it evident to us that we need to be around others, to share and commune with our neighbors and friends. We give thanks to our servicemen and women that are sacrificing their time and lives to help assure that we continue to have the freedom to be able to do this. In a world of unrest, you have blessed us with the greatest country and people that there are. Thank you for your love for us. As your word states in Jeremiah 29, 11, for I know the plans that I have for you, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. We trust in your word and eagerly anticipate what you have in store for us. Thank you for the progressive people that you have placed in our lives, such as the staff at Triangle Telephone. They'll look to the future and try to anticipate what our needs are and will be. You have given us an ever-changing world, but you have also given us the minds to think and adapt to whatever comes next. Change has been occurring for generations, but you know what is coming and have prepared us to face these changes. For the meal that we will enjoy here in a bit, we give you thanks. For the farmers that planted and harvest the products, for you for providing the rain to grow the products, for the ranchers that raise the cattle and the grass, and for the hands that prepare the meal, and for the people who serve it. Thank you for the roles that you've given each and every one of us. Let us recognize that we all have our part to be a cog in your ever precise wheel. I pray that we accept this nourishment for our bodies and your nourishment for our souls, as you have intended. I ask that your Holy Spirit be with us as we gather here today and ride along with us as we travel home this afternoon. Lord, we love you. We give you thanks and praise for this gathering. It is in your Son, Jesus' name, that we pray all these things. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Richard. Uh, at this time, I would call Secretary Treasurer Rick Picorni up to do the uh, reading of the notice of meeting the affidavit and the quorum. Good morning, everyone. Thanks for coming out this fine morning. If you were here last year, you might remember that we were we were um, asking you members here to call your friends because uh, getting a quorum to convene the meeting was an issue. And at that same meeting, annual meeting last year, the bylaws were changed regarding the quorum. And now uh, with the mail-in ballots, which were authorized by last year's bylaw changes, uh, with the mail-in ballots count as a person present at the annual meeting. So quorum is not likely an issue. We have 41 members registered here today and between the Haver meeting uh, with in-person members and the mail-in ballots that came in, we have over 1,300 members registered for the annual meeting. So we have indeed met our quorum requirements. So before I read the notice of uh, the notice of the meeting and the affidavit of mailing. I have something here that uh, came out of an ad paper 
out of north central Montana. You folks may or may not get the same publication here, but it applies. It's a, a poem, and it's entitled Bills, and it uh, reads as such. I get two letters each month that have made my life a living hell. One because of what Ben Franklin did, and the other one is from Ma Bell. Oh Ben, I would like to tell you where you should have put that kite. And Ma Bell, I call you dirty names when I hear a ringing in the middle of the night. The lights we shut off when we can to keep the bill down low. No matter how hard we try with the bill that comes, it doesn't show. The telephone we use to visit on, just to keep in touch, and as usual, every month, when the bill comes in, it's too much. We now have no more ringing in the house. We unplug the telephones now. We have our own ideas in the middle of the night of touch tones. For lights, we use candles and the glow from the fire's flickering grace. We got rid of the two bills above but a maternity bill took their place. <laughs> so keep paying the bills or not, depending on your preferences. Now for the official notice of the 68th annual meeting of the members, which is found on page 12 in the booklet at your seats. It reads as follows. The 68th Annual Meeting of Members of Triangle Telephone Cooperative Association Incorporated of Haver, Montana will be held on Saturday, October 8th, 2022 at 10 a.m. in Sub Ballroom on the campus of Montana State University Northern in Haver, in Haver, Montana, and in Big Timber, Montana on Saturday, October 15th, 2022 at 10 a.m at the Sweetgrass County Fairgrounds Community Center to take action on the following matters. The election of three trustees of the cooperative, number two, bylaw amendments, number three, passing upon reports of officers, trustees, and committees for the previous year, number four, conducting such other business as may come before the meeting or any adjournments thereof. In accordance with the bylaws, the nominating committee, composed of cooperative members, has nominated the following individuals as candidates for the position of trustee of Triangle Telephone Cooperative Association, Incorporated. In accordance with the by bylaws, the nominating... I just read that. I got distracted here. Squirrel. <laughs> All right. Um, District 1 nominated was Doug Lowry, District 2 Liz Work, District 3, District 6, excuse me, Dave Schwartzbaugh and Coulter Todd. In accordance with the bylaws, nominations by petition are also accepted. District 1, Tyson Schumacher nominated by petition. The name of names on this notice indicates the name in which the membership is carried. Voting must be be done by the member, or in the case of a joint membership, by only one of the joint members. No voting by proxy is allowed. Registration starts at 8.30 a.m. and lunch will begin after the meeting. Prizes will be awarded. Hope to see you there. Signed, Richard Picorni, Secretary Treasurer. Dated 9-20-2022. And now for the affidavit of mailing of notice of the annual meeting. I, Richard Picorni, being first duly sworn, state that I am Secretary of Triangle Telephone Cooperative Association Incorporated. On September 20th, 2022, I mailed to each member of the, of the association a notice of the annual meeting of the members to be held October 8th and 15th, 2022. I deposited such notice with postage prepaid and addressed to each member in the United States Mail at Livingston, Montana, and the copy attached to this affidavit is a true and correct copy of the notice of such annual meeting as mailed. Signed, Richard McCorney, Secretary. Thank you very much. Sliding my agenda across the floor didn't interrupt him as much as I thought it might, so. Uh, 
At this time, I'm going to introduce the board. Uh, I'm Rich Duker from Schmidt, Montana. I'm currently the board chair. To my immediate right is Richard Swartz from Rapple J Broadview, vice chair of the board. Then Doug Lowry from Big Timber. Rich McCorney from Big Sandy, who's our secretary treasurer, who you've heard from. Tom Bangs from up at Red Yard, Joplin Inverness. And Liz Swartz, or excuse me, Liz Work. I did that last year too, but I caught, didn't catch myself. Today I did. Liz Work from down in the Hayes Lodgepole area. And Dave Swartzbach from Big Sandy. Uh, they're a great bunch of guys to work with, and gals. Uh, at this time then, we're going to move to the minutes of the 2021 annual meeting. Uh, they were given to you when you arrived. I can't have the secretary read them if you so desire, but if you do not, I would entertain a motion to dispense with the reading of the minutes and approve them as presented. Do I have a motion? I have a motion. Is there a second? I have a second. Discussion? Discussion? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. aye. Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Thank you. We have the report of the officers uh, and directors. Does any other director wish to say anything? Nobody ever takes me up on it. I keep hoping. <laughs> so I will do a quick report. As mentioned earlier, this is a reconvene. We're reconvening the annual meeting that we recessed in Haver. Uh, and like to welcome everyone here. Uh, we were hoping for a little bigger turnout, uh, but we're glad that the people that did come did attend, so thank you. And one of the things that are allowing us to go forward with this is last year, as Rick McCorney, our secretary, mentioned, was the bylaw change that we count the quorum from the uh, mail-in ballots and the have a meeting. Otherwise, we would not be able to have a meeting today because we would not have reached our 50 member quorum. Uh, so, and with the mail-in ballots and, and the second meeting down here, the intent was to try to get additional members involved. And we have accomplished that uh, in the ballots as Rick recorded, there's over 1,300, probably going to be close to 13, 25, or 50 that have voted on the bylaws and the trustees when we get done with this meeting. Uh, as we talked about earlier, we plan on having the fiber of the home completed by the end of 2024. And even with the lead time it is taking to get the materials for these upgrades, we still hope to finish by 2024. Uh, some of the materials that we were ordered are out over two years now for these projects. Uh, and also by the time we get done this fall, we will have over 85% of Triangle's members connected with fiber to the home that's probably pushing 90%, but I'm going to stay with the safe number of 85%. Capital credit refunds are at the discretion of the Board of Trustees. When deciding on the amount of capital credits to be refunded, the trustees have to take into account current and future upgrades, maintenance and cost of the cooperatives, and other costs for the cooperative, as well as the projections our cost consultants uh, might say what's going to happen to the Universal Service Fund and what, guessing what the politicians might do because the Universal Service Fund is a huge part of our revenue uh, and the settlement basis for Triangle Telephone. However, with the estimated fiber completion within two years, the sale of Triangle Mobile and other measures that we put in place to contain costs, the trustees felt we were in a cash position that we could uh, refund a large amount of capital credits. And what we decided to do 
was to refund all capital credits from 1993 to 2001, which is about $10 million. Uh, this past year, we've also refunded one, approximately $1 million in estates. And the other thing that we are doing is offering the members the uh, option, excuse me, the option to uh, take the discounted rate on the other 20 years because by refunding 93 through 2001, we have dropped the rotation back to 20 years. The estimate right now is uh, there's going to be approximately another three to four million refunded under that. So the total amount of capital credit refunds for this year uh, looks to be somewhere between 14 and 15 million dollars that between the 93 to 2001, the discounting and the estates. Uh, so we're getting that money back to the members because capital credits are a very big ingredients of co-ops. And so we're, we're hoping to get that accomplished. Last year there were some questions, more so up at Haver, but some down here, in regarding what Triangle does for their youth in their community. And if you look in the, your program in the center, it lists a lot of the things that Triangle does, from like $37,000 scholarships to graduating seniors, three I think to college students, move on to school technology grants, and this year we started a teacher appreciation uh, grant and we only gave one but with the quality of applications we had received this next year we talked like if the applications are of the same quality uh, we're going to present a lot more of those teacher appreciation uh, grants and you know and then Triangle just does not do the education stuff, but the education funds come from unclaimed capital credits. Uh, and the unclaimed capital credits are when we do a general refund, uh, those people that we cannot find, or for whatever reason it comes back, they're put in a separate fund for five years, and after five years, by law, uh, we can move those into an education fund and that's what we do and, and that's where these educational opportunities are funded from. Uh, but other things we do, uh, every year we donate to the local fire departments. Uh, they're the ones that go out and protect our infrastructure if there's a fire. They're usually short of funds because most of them are volunteer and by giving them a little extra, they have something for training or equipment. Most of us do not realize how many devices we have in our home that uses bandwidth. If your devices are running slowly or buffering a lot, you may need to increase the amount of bandwidth you're receiving at the present time. You can call into the office and they will be glad to help you determine the amount of bandwidth you need for your devices to function in the manner you wish them to. Uh, the other thing is, I would be remiss if I did not thank the employees of Triangle Telephone for all their hard work and dedication over the last two years of COVID. They kept our, our system up and going in a very difficult time, and so that was greatly appreciated. Thank you. And also, I would like to thank them for setting up. I think they did a very good job of setting up the tables and the decorations. Uh, so thank you. Does anyone have any questions that I might try to answer? Hearing none. We're going to move to the general manager's report, Craig. Good morning, everyone. Uh, 
You know, I always start with the same thing, but it's it's vital. Members, thank you for coming. The co-op is because of you. We appreciate it. We appreciate what we do for you. We, tr we strive to serve you as best we can at all times. And if we're not meeting those needs, please let me know. You know, I want to thank the board here. Um, Rich said we're at 85, taking this, the conservative road. At the end of this year, we'll be 90.5% if everything goes right. And I'm saying that because I'm down here in Big Timber, and we're hitting a little thing called rock. <laughs> and it's really slowing us up. So uh, I think we're going to get everything else cut over, um, and we're going to continue to work hard down here in the rock, but it's, I, I gotta tell you, <laughs> when they say boulder, they're not kidding. So, but but the board started this back in 08, and we're one of the co few co-ops, only one of two, and we're ahead of the other one. Uh, that is as far along as we are with fiber to the home. And that's only attributable to the leadership of the board and the direction they've given and the directions that we've taken and the employees that we have. So I want to also thank, if you notice, there's, there's quite a few Triangle people here today. Um, and if you guys don't mind, I'd like you to all stand up. Every one of you. I know i, know I got to drag it out of you, but you can all stand up. I want to thank you guys. Uh, this is our leadership team and IT who makes everything run and marketing. So if you have any questions, please ask them. Thank you guys for doing what you do every day. And then I know we also have some retirees here. So if you guys can stand up, I'd appreciate that too. We couldn't do what we've done if it wasn't for them and what they did in the past. So thank you guys. Um, I also want to thank Tyson Schumacher for coming. He's running for the board and also Coulter Todd. Thank you guys for showing up. Really appreciate that. Best of luck. And Rich talked a little bit about COVID. Um, uh, you know, it's not completely over, but let's hope it's over. Um, it, 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 presented a lot of challenges, but again, I got to give my team a lot of credit. We dispersed and went out and a lot of people went home to work and a lot of technicians had to show up in homes where they weren't sure if people were sick or not. And they had protect personal protection equipment, but they did it every day. And I, mean, I just can't say enough for them. Um, the requirements that the government put on us uh, did not help, but yet the team persevered and just did a phenomenal job. So again, thank them through that time. It was quite trying. As Rich said, this is the second of two dual annual meetings. The one we had last week was in Havard. It was a good meeting. Uh, at that point, we didn't know how many ballots would be received through the mail. And as Rich said, and Rick, you know, we're going to have over 1,300. So to put that in perspective, even when there was just one meeting in Havard before we did the dual meeting last year and here, we usually had between 120 and 180 members show up. And that was all that voted. And we have over 12,500 members. So you're talking about 1% used to make the decisions for the entire co-op. But with the mail-in ballots and the response that we've got on year one, we're now over 10%. That is a huge accomplishment, and it means a lot that we are opening it up and getting the transparency and support of the members to tell us what they want. So I, I just want to thank you for that. It, it really means a lot. The retirements that Rich talked about, um, $10 million, that was a bold move. The, the board thought that it was a good time with the cash position we had because of the things we did to give that money back. It also takes us from 29 years to 20, which is great. Um, so that, that's very good. And returning that money to you is where it belongs because that's where we took the money to do what we did. So I want to thank you guys for that as well. 
Now into our fiber builds, as I said, we're, 90, we're going to be 90.5, barring some boulders. Um, and we're going to continue. We, we, our plans are to finish in 24, to be completely built out for our membership. Um, barring any issues we have with permitting and, and other such issues. But right now, right now it looks like we're going to meet that. And so from a cooperative perspective, we're on target and doing really well. I also want to talk just for a second about the federal money you may have heard about in the infrastructure plan. It's called BEAD, Broadband Equity Access and Deployment or Development. Um, it's $42 billion, which is a lot of money. The state, out of the ARPA funds, which was Trump money, um, that money should, well, it was supposed to be announced two months ago. It was supposed to be announced this week. We'll see if the state announces it next week on who gets uh, that funding. It's about $250 million that's going to be awarded here in the state of Montana to build into areas that don't have service. Now, when I say that, that's very clear as to why we are not going after, did not go after that funding. It's because we already have our plan, we have our dollars set, and frankly, we don't want all the rules that are tied to that government money. Um, because there's no such thing as free. We all know that. And so, you know, our plans are fine. We're very financially secure. We don't really need that money for our ILEC territory, which means our co-op territory. So you won't see us being awarded any of that money this round. The next round, the bead money, which comes out next year, um, we'll see how that money is and what the rules are around it. We may go after some of that money to look at building outside of our territory, outside of the co-op area, because as I just said, we really don't need it for in the co-op. We've already got those plans scheduled, the dollars allocated. So we'll see what happens there. We'll see what kind of rules they put on it. We'll see what kind of uh, uh, return we get, because again, there is no support at all for that money once you get it, um, unlike there is for the money that we get today. So if you hear about that, you'll know that we did not put in for any money of this year's uh, that we were going to accept, and then next year's bead money, we'll look at it, but there's nothing that's going to change what we're doing as a co-op um, for the co-op territory. Mark Majors will be coming up next. Uh, he'll talk about the financial health of the organization. It's also in your annual report. Please look at that. It's really good. I think we've done a really good job. I think the board here has done a really good job of making sure that we're doing the right things in the right places in the right ways. Uh, I also want to talk a little bit about two new services. Well, actually, I think one of them was up last year, but we have internet only now and voice over internet protocol. And, and a lot of people have asked, well, why, why are you doing internet only now? Uh, in the last couple of years. Well, that's because we had rules on us from the FCC that kind of prohibited us from doing so. So now those rules have changed because we are a regulated entity. We're not regulated by the state of Montana, but we do have FCC rules, national rules we do have to follow. So those internet only and also um, uh, the VoIP, voice over internet, by the end of this year, if not next for sure, we'll be over half of our members will have internet only or voice over their internet and not in the traditional sense as we have for years. So it tells you how much things have changed because this company was founded on dial tone to the house, right? Internet wasn't even a thought back then. So it's changed, we've changed, we've delivered our products the way that we're supposed to. So. Um, that's, that's something that if you're interested and in, want to change, because I believe the VoIP, I keep saying word change, sorry about that. Uh, the VoIP um, product will actually save you money and, and increase your speed. So please take advantage of that. Do I have any questions? I know there was none for Rich, but are there any for me? We didn't get any written down, but does anybody have any questions at all? Super. All right. Uh, I want to thank my wife who's not here. So make up for uh, 
last year. Um, so, and, and I also want to thank, and you'll see her in a minute, Marn Keys, who is our attorney. Uh, Marn does an absolutely incredible job for us. So thank you, Marn. Thank you, boy. Thanks, Greg. And, and being I have not done that yet, I need to thank my lovely wife, Rosemary, who's sitting out here for all of the assistance and help she gives me for all of the boards that I serve on. So thanks, Rose. And with that, we're going to move to the financial report. Our CFO, Mark Majors, will be giving that. Thank you, Rich. Um, good morning, everyone, and welcome to this year's annual meeting. I'll take just a couple minutes to go over Triangle Telephone's financial statements for 2021. If you'd like to follow along, they're on pages 10 and 11 of the annual meeting booklet. I'll begin with a few items from the balance sheet, which is on page 10. Total assets ended the year with a balance of over $328 million. Our property, plant, and equipment balances continue to grow as we complete more and more of our fiber to the home upgrades. The fiber to the home upgrade projects we completed in 2021 were Molt, Denton, we finished up the rural part of Stanford, the northern part of the South Malta Exchange, the northeast part of Big Timber, and we also got a start on the town of Moore, which was actually a 2022 project. Triangle Telephone ended 2021 with a plant and service balance of over $359 million. Triangle Telephone's balance sheet remains very healthy with total equity of 80.69%. Next, we'll take a look at the statement of revenues and expenses on page 11. Triangle Telephone's operating revenues decreased in 2021 to $52.4 million. Our local network's uh, revenues were up by a little over $1 million, but network access service was down by almost $1.5 million. Our total operating expenses decreased slightly last year by about $140,000. Depreciation expense continues to increase and is by far the largest of our operating expenses. This is due to our continued investment in our plan. The remaining operating expenses showed a decrease of nearly 4% when compared to 2020. For 2021, our property taxes were approximately $3.3 million. So after subtracting out the property taxes, we were left with net operating margins of just a little, little under $14 million. And that was down by about $180,000 compared to 2020. The next expense category is our fixed charges. These are the charges for the interest costs for the money that we borrow. And in 2021, our interest costs were about $1.3 million. Our total non-operating income increased to $14.7 million in 2021. The main reason for the increase was Triangle Communications, our wholly owned subsidiary, saw an increase of over $5 million to $14,224,000. The next line on the income statement shows that we had a non-regulated net loss of $475,000 in 2021. This brings us to our net margins for 2021 of $26,865,530. So as you can see, 2021 was up about $4.2 million, so a very good year for Triangle Telephone. With nine months of 2022 in the books, it looks like 2022 will be another good year for Triangle Telephone, um, financially with net margins projected at over $20 million. In 2021, Triangle Telephone paid back to our member owners almost $4 million in capital credits between the general retirement, estates paid out, and discounted capital credits. Uh, that's the end of my report. If anyone has any questions on the financial report, I'd be happy to try and answer them at this time. Yes, sir. Explain a little more about the assets and related companies. Um, well, we, we have Triangle Communications, which is, is our, our subsidiary, and that have, has most of our non-regulated um, operations in there. We have 
Um, cellular was in there. We have Wild Blue, <clears throat> Wild Blue Internet Operations, Long Distance is in there, and we have some investment in there as well. That those assets do not show in this financial report. Um, they are subsidiary. That is the investment in Tricom. That's that's what we're talking about there. Did that answer your question, or? That's just one investment then? The investment in, unless I'm reading the wrong one. Oh, the investment, okay, we also have some investments in like small um, cooperatives, uh, farmers union, um, our software company, um, an insurance company, stuff like that. We have some investments in those, some patronage in those as well. But the, prim yeah, the primary investment in affiliated companies is the investment in Triangle Communications. So. Any other questions? Okay. Thank you. Thanks, Mark. Uh, just real quick, a follow-up there. The reason we have Tricom is to, to put in place those uh, services that we provide that are non-regulated. Uh, and those are the ones that, as Craig mentioned earlier, that the federal government, FCC, does not regulate. And it's easier to function as a company if those, if the regulated and the non-regulated are not together. And Triangle Communication was set up before I got on the board back in 1986 for that reason. And at that time, we had like uh, the Big Sandy Cable TV and some of those other services that were in there. When you look at the uh, financial statement, uh, I'm going to give you an example on how much Triangle has grown. When I got in, on, on 19, in 1986 on the board, there was a couple of past trustees visiting after the meeting, and they were a couple of the original trustees. And in 1986, I believe we had a net worth of $23 million in assets. And they were shocked. They said, you know, we haven't been in, uh, around that long, and to have $23 million, that's quite an accomplishment. Well now, I think we're at $328 million. And that's due to some of the U.S. West properties we purchased. Uh, a lot of the upgrades, when we went to fiber the home, uh, everything we've put in the ground to provide better services. So, uh, if anybody has any additional questions at this time, we would try to answer them. Uh, if not, we're gonna move along. And the other thing is, if you don't have them right now, we're going to be around when the meeting adjourns. And if you have any questions, come grab one of us. And uh, if we don't know the answer, we'll find somebody here on the staff that definitely does know the answer. So with that, we're gonna move along to the video that we have, Tom Metcalf, uh, our video person who is amazing with what he puts together and presents to us. So with that, Tom, please. Okay. Party lines were quite interesting because everybody had their own ring. It might be two short rings or a short and a long, but everybody on the party line's phone rang at the same time and you just picked it up when it was your ring, supposedly. <laughs> but there were no secrets on the party line. I can remember sitting in the kitchen with a long telephone cord sitting on the floor. That's how we would have to do, you know, sit on the floor and talk. <laughs> I had one woman at Melville. She says, uh, I don't want a party line. And I said, well, everybody else is. 
is you're going to have a private life. You're going to be on a party line by yourself. So you're going to have a private line. She says, how am I going to get the news out here? <laughs> the only time there was a problem with that was when the neighbors, I can't remember if it was a cat or a dog, knocked the phone off the garage, off the hook in the garage. And, uh, and they weren't home. So... <laughs> When I was in high school, we got a hold of a couple crank telephones, the old box kind. We uh, took the top wire, of barbed wire, because there was a fence from our buildings to the school, and put an insulator and put the wire on the insulator, and um, it worked. Uh, so uh, it was nice to have connection with the school. My mother was Norwegian, and she spoke Norwegian, and the next door neighbor was Norwegian, and she spoke Norwegian. So if they wanted to talk about something just together, they went to Norwegian, and you could hear the <laughs> And I can remember they asked us at the meeting, the supervisors and stuff, and I made the comment that I thought cell phone was, uh, that was going to be the greatest thing. But I just couldn't see no damn use for internet. And how little did I know. <laughs> it's nice to have things change like this so that it's an easier life. I can't even imagine what it's going to be like in 50 years. I mean, I think of my grandkids, what they do already. Can you imagine what their grandkids are going to do? It's... Thanks, Tom. Party lines were the original conference calls. <laughs> you know, I, I, I remember as a kid, we had seven on our party line, and most of the others did. And I remember my dad getting on in the morning, and his best friend was on a different party line. And by the time they got off, they might have talked to 10 to 14 different people over the course of that time. Of course, as mentioned, the privacy was an issue uh, I can remember my little sister, she was talking to her boyfriend and there was a loud clunk and she and our neighbor down the road was Bob Watkins and she goes, Bob, are you on the phone? And there's a short pause and he goes, sorry Les, I dropped the phone. <laughs> so, uh, we've come a long ways from that, but yet I think with the party line it did keep communities closer than some of the things we have now because every time you picked up and Bob Watkins, I was over stacking hay for him one time, and we're sitting there at lunch, and there's a ding on his phone. And he goes, Rich, you better answer that. That's your folks, and they're not home. So he knew every ding that was slightly different on the party line. Uh, so with that, we're going to move along. We're going to go to the bylaws, and Mara Keyes, our attorney from Church Harris, Johnson, and Williams, uh, is going to present the bylaws, and I agree with Craig, she does a super job for us. So, Mar and Keys, please. Well, thank you for that. That's always nice to hear. So, as they've already said, my name is Mar and Keys. I'm an attorney with the church here at Johnson and Williams, and I'm out of Great Falls, so not too far north of you guys and it is my pleasure to be the attorney working with Triangle. So for the bylaws, we have four proposed changes this year, and instead of reading the whole entire bylaw, how it's worked better is to just read the summary of each proposed change. And if you want to follow along with these changes, they start on page 14 of your booklet, and what I'm going to be looking at is the blue font. That's the summary. <laughs> So the first proposed bylaw change is to section 4.02, special meetings. This proposed bylaw change is to increase the number of trustees to be a majority quorum. Also, to adjust the number of members to match state law for the number of members to request a special meeting. The board respectfully requests that you accept this bylaw change. The next proposed bylaw change is to section 4.04, quorum. 
This proposed bylaw change clarifies how the quorum is calculated, if there is more than one annual meeting or special meeting. The board respectfully requests that you accept this bylaw change. The third proposed bylaw change is going to be on page 15 of your booklet, starting there. And this is a change to section 5.06, nominations. The board is proposing this bylaw change to make trustee nominations and elections more open, transparent, and accessible to all members. Since all candidates will be listed on mail-in ballots, the board is also asking that petitions be received at least 45 days as opposed to 30 days before the annual meeting to make sure that the ballots are delivered to members as soon as possible to give members the maximum amount of time to vote. The board is asking me to clean up language in some additional sections. The board respectfully asks for your support of this bylaw change that will make our elections open and fair for all members to run as trustee. And then the fourth proposed bylaw change starts on page 17 of the booklet and ends on page 18. And this is a change to section 7.02, election and term of office. This is a parliamentary procedure change among the board that happens after the annual meeting when board members are selected as officers. This allows for the board to re-elect the same officers as the previous year if the entire board agrees. The board re respectfully requests your support on this bylaw change. Does anyone have any questions about these proposed bylaw changes? Seeing none and noting that mail-in ballots have already been sent out and received, um, we are going to move on to voting for the bylaw changes. So if you have not already sent in a mail-in ballot, then when you registered this morning, you should have received a blue bylaw slip. So if you have that blue bylaw ballot slip, please hold it up in the air and one of our helpers here will come around and exchange that slip for a ballot. And so once you get your blue ballot, uh, bylaw ballot, if you'll take one of the pens and mark your selection, either yes or no, for the proposed bylaw changes. And once you've completed your ballot, you can again hold it up in the air and somebody will come around to collect them. still are working on it, just when you're ready, hold it up so we can collect them. Yeah. All right, well thank you guys and I'll be seeing you in just a little bit for the second ballot. Thank you, Mark. Uh, Going back to the question you had, it may be, you know, when they talked about investments in affiliated companies, there's an asterisk after that. And that might be why the gentleman saw that and was looking. Uh, and that's been there for a long time and should be removed uh, because it was not just triangle communication. It was when we had CMC, uh, which was the U.S. West properties we bought back in, I believe it was 93, uh, which had about 5,000 members in it, so it was a huge uh, company also, and we brought those into Triangle Telephone as full members back in about 15, I think, they came in, somewhere around that range. So uh, we're going to have to look at that and remove that asterisk for next year, but good catch. 
we will move to the nominating committee report and John Zinni, I hope I pronounced that right, will be giving that report. At this time, I would like to thank the nominating committee for the work they do. It's very important uh, to bring forward candidates for trustee positions. John? Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Uh, the nominees uh, our committee uh, report is as follows. The 2020 nominating committee of the Triangle Telephone Cooperative Association Incorporated met in the office of the cooperative in the co of the cooperative in Haver, Montana, on August 3rd, 2022, at 11:30 a.m. Tammy Bergman was elected chairperson. Members present were Charlene Darlington, District 4, Patricia Quizno, District 2, Tammy Bergman, District 5, Gerald Pierce, District 4, Rodney Key, District 3. Those participating by conference call, Dale Teachout, District 1. Those participating by Zoom, Ronald R. Ritter, Writer, excuse me, uh, District 1, Dave Hickson, District 1, and myself, John Zinni, District 1. Nominations were District 1, which is Melville, Big Timber, Reef Point, Grapple J, Broadview, and Malt Exchange areas, Doug Lowry. District 2, Fox Elder, South Haver, and Hayes Zortman Exchange areas, Elizabeth Work. District 6, at large district, comprises, comprised of all the associations, exchanges, or services, Dave Schwarzbach and Coulter Todd. Therefore, being no further nominations upon motion duly made, seconded, and unanimously carried, nominations were closed. The above listed members are to be candidates for the trustee election to be held at the, tri at the TTC annual meeting of members on October 8th and 15th, 2022. There being no further business to come before the nominated committee meeting, the meeting was adjourned, respectfully submitted to the membership by the nominating committee. Thank you. Thank you, John. Before we move forward here, uh, I gotta apologize, I gotta back up for a little bit. Uh, I do need a motion to approve financial report. Uh, so if I could, uh, I'd entertain a motion. We have a motion, is there a second? Is, I, we have a second. Thank you, discussion? Discussion? Discussion, all those in favor? Signify by saying aye. aye. Opposed, same sign, thank you. At this time, then I would call Marn keys back up to conduct the election of the trustees. Thank you. So this year there are three <coughs> districts that have trustee elections going on. That's District 1, District 2, and District 6. And as you just heard from the nominating committee report, there were four candidates nominated by committee, Doug Lowry, Elizabeth Work, Dave Schwartzbach, and Coulter Todd. And pursuant to the bylaws, there was one nomination by petition, Tyson Schumacher. As we do each year, we're going to allow the candidates to make a statement if they would so like. And we'll start with district number one, Doug Lowry. Mr. Lowry, if you'd like to make a statement. Thank you, Mark. Good morning, as I always like to say, top of the day to you. Mm -hmm. I want to thank you all for coming, and I especially want to thank my wife, Jane, for all the support that she's given me all these years I've served on this board. I am Doug Lowry, born in Montana and raised in Big Timber. And it is an honor to be nominated by the nomination committee to be a candidate to represent Big Timber Exchange as a trustee on the Board of Directors for Triangle Communications. 
The Board of Directors is a very diverse group that serves you, the co-op members. Triangle Communications is much more than just a phone company. Many co programs have been instituted, such as Vitality Grants, and the one I really like is a Teacher's Appreciation Program that awards teachers up to $2,500. Triangle also grants up to $37, $1,000 scholarships to high school students and up to three college scholarships to college students from the Triangle service area. Triangle supports youth by purchasing livestock at the county fairs. They provide schools with technology grants up to $1,500 for equipment training and supplies and providing grants up to $500 for science, technology, engineering, or math-related projects. A high school junior can win a trip to Washington, D.C., and will meet there with other students from across the country. Triangle stresses economic development in our service areas. Without strong, viable communities, Triangle would not exist. Fiber optics is being put in all of Triangle services, so areas, so if you haven't received it yet, you will soon be getting it. I believe that over 80% of Triangle service areas now have fiber optics, and by the end of next year, that will be 90%. And in, 19, and in 2024, all customers will have fiber optics. This is the time of year that members will be receiving capital credits checks, and this year, Triangle will be paying over $10 million back to the membership. This is the first year that mail-in ballots have been available, and in past elections, all the elections have been handled at the annual meetings. Again this year, Triangle has many door prizes to be awarded, thanks to the generous donations from many of our Triangle supporters. I want to especially thank the Triangle employees for a job well done. So, several of these employees are responsible for setting up this room. Without the employees, Triangle would not be able to function. So I ask you once again to place your trust in me as a trustee for Triangle Communications. Thank you. For district number one is Tyson Schumacher. Mr. Schumacher. Good morning. Um, first, I want to thank the, the board, uh, members, employees, and in following with a tradition this morning, definitely my wife. And I would not want to forget that. I don't think she let me live that down. Uh, thank you, Gretchen, sitting over there. Uh, again, my name is Tyson Schumacher. I was born in Austin, Minnesota, originally, so if I throw in some you betches, some opes, um, or some don't you knows, I apologize, but they will come out of me if we talk long enough. When I was 14, uh, I started working at a computer shop after school. Uh, a few years later, I was doing 911 database programming and IT consulting, uh, which took me actually through 2005, um, where I, I switched into nonprofit mental health. Uh, working with kids with serious emotional disturbances. Uh, in 2007, I started working for a national company. We worked in six states providing the same services for kids. Uh, in 2017, I came to Molt, uh, Montana, about five or six years ago, uh, to work at Yellowstone Boys and Girls Ranch in Billings, Montana, as the Chief Information Officer. Uh, in that role, we work with about 1,300 uh, kids with uh, serious emotional disturbances every year. Um, and we do that um, we do that in a lot of areas uh, related to Triangle. Um, just yesterday, I'm happy to say to the Governor, Craig Gianforte, appointed me to the Mental Health Board of Visitors. I'm very excited to provide some oversight for our mental health programming in the state. Um, in my work experience, I've worked with a lot of large internet providers. Um, and what I'm really struck by with Triangle is that uh, the spectrum's not coming to our areas. Uh, when you look at density of subscribers, we are in a lot of places where there are not a lot of people, and we have access to fiber optic internet. Uh, as Craig mentioned, 
of the physical plant has fiber. I just want to take a second to recognize how amazing that is and the fact that the board and the co-op did that prior to 2020, which puts us so far ahead of those material shortages. So I um, just really think that's a great and fantastic thing to do. That fiber optic makes sure that our rural communities can participate in the local and global economy. Um, I think it was Rich who said uh, keeping communities uh, closer on the party line. That's still true with internet. Um, I know that my neighbor sells lamb because she sold it through the co-op. She uses her triangle internet to do that. I met her and I really enjoy that. I enjoy the fact that I can find purveyors in Montana that sell products because they use their home internet. So I do think that still that community aspect is still very much alive. Um, I participated in a kind of a request for comment type uh, meeting once uh, for broadband planning where somebody said, well, if they want better internet, tell them to move to the city. I don't agree with that. Um, I love where we live, I love our rural areas, and I want to protect that. Memberships matter, and cooperatives matter. Uh, your membership in this cooperative is important because you're protecting the future and ensuring that we will continue to provide services to our rural areas from Montana so that kids that discharge from our facility can go back to their homes and communities across Montana, particularly in the Triangle service area, will still have connection, that will still have connection um, and that we'll have quality communications. Um, I believe in that very strongly. So it is my goal if I join the board, um, if the membership elects me in District 1 to protect that legacy and to try to ensure that future. Um, I would like to stay involved with Triangle regardless of, <laughs> of that fact as well because I do believe in this co-op quite strongly. If anybody has any questions, I'll be knowing about. Uh, please feel free. Um, to ask me, and I appreciate your consideration for vote for District 1. Thank you. The second district with an election is District Number 2, and the candidate for District Number 2 is Liz Work. Ms. Work, would you like to make a statement? Thank you. Um, good morning. Yet last year I wasn't able to be here. I live in um, the southern part of Fort Belknap Reservation in Hayes, and we were still in um, lock, shutdown, so I wasn't able to come, but I was, thankfully, we had it over um, Zoom, so that way I was able to participate that way. Um, so it's very nice to be here. It's a beautiful area. You guys are very lucky. I'd love to see all the the water in the reservoirs coming down here. Uh, first, I would like to thank all the staff members who worked extremely hard to put our uh, annual membership meetings on. You guys have done an awesome job. Thank you. I know that traveling down here, um, it is takes a toll, but you guys did a great job. It looks great. So the past three years have been an incredible learning curve for me. And I'm very grateful I have been able to be part of a forward-thinking board and a co-op. And the Triangle staff and administration have a lot to be proud of as they worked smoothly through COVID. It was amazing to see the obstacles that Craig had um, and that all the staff was able to overcome those. And I'm very, very grateful. They have taken those lessons to improve telecommunication communication services here across Montana. And as I look forward, I would be honored to represent District 2 on the Triangle Communication Board as a trustee for the next three years. I look forward to seeing fiber to the home be completed, especially in our area, crossing our fingers, and um, to expand in the future, whatever that may be. Um, it's amazing to hear some of the stories that this board has gone through and since I've lived here in Montana, um, it's been 20 years, 22 years, 23 years now, and just the expansion of communication is incredible to see since then. So I just thank you for attending today, and I hope that you continue to come to the annual meetings, and I hope to continue to serve on the board for the next few years, so thank you.
the last district with an election this year is district number six. We have two candidates in this district. Uh, the first one is Dave Schwartzbach. Mr. Schwartzbach, would you like to make a statement? Good morning. I'm Dave Schwartzbach from Big Sandy, Montana. First of all, I'd like to thank everybody for attending our annual meeting today. It's great to see you guys here today. I'd like to give special thanks to fellow board members for all the work they do and everything, all the support. And a big thanks out to all our employees, past and present. And as you heard earlier, we are nearing the end of the fiber to the home project. So we got to think about pushing forward, give you guys the best product, best service, and at the lowest price. At that, I'd just like to thank you again, and I appreciate your vote. Also running for district number six is Coulter Todd. Mr. Todd, would you like to make a statement? Good morning, everybody. Beautiful day out there. Uh, I kind of I want to try and keep it short. I told everybody I was going to try and keep this within the last five years. Uh, I don't think everybody quite knows who I am. I'd also like to uh, thank my wife for being here with me. Uh, follow suit with everybody else. Let's go. In this program. Anyways, um, I graduated from, I guess I'm gonna, sorry, I haven't had to speak to a lot of people uh, before. Uh, one quick note, uh, I graduated from MSU Bobcat, or MSU uh, Bozeman, uh, Go Cats. Um, in 2011, it's been kind of wild 10 years now, uh, I started my construction company, Circle T Construction, and uh, um, it's been really successful. I've, I've been uh, very lucky in, in developing relationships, employees. Um, in, in 2014, I was able to come back and buy my first house. And we were able to move here in Big Timber. I love this community. It's a nice small town. Um, uh, 2015, my wife and I got married. And uh, in 2017, we brought uh, uh, Tinley Todd into this beautiful world. So. That's kind of my family background. Um, since then, uh, I've continued with Circle T Construction. Um, we built the first brewery here in Big Timber, Montana that they had ever seen along with a tap room. Um, uh, I feel like my construction knowledge would be very useful to this board. Um, I'm also involved in a couple other boards. As far as local boards, I'm on the Community Foundation here in Big Timber, Montana. And I'm also part of the uh, golf board here. As far as statewide, I'm part of the MTA, which is Montana Tavern Association. I would just join that board. I was nominated to get on that board last year. So, um, in short, and my wife can to attest to this, uh, I like to be a very busy person, <laughs> um, and I'm very community involved. I love this community. Uh, I look forward to being here for the rest of my life. Um, I'm a hard worker, and I learn really quick. Um, I would like to thank you for my nomination, and I look forward to hopefully get to serve you all. Thank you. Thank you, candidates. Is that all right? Yeah. <laughs> all right. So again, noting that uh, voting has already commenced with the mail-in ballots, we're going to move to the in-person voting here. <laughs> so if you have not already sent in a mail-in ballot when you registered, you should have also gotten a white slip. This one is for the trustee ballot. So raise that up in the air, and we'll have people come around and exchange that for your trustee ballot. And then once you have your trustee ballot slip, mark your answers, one each per district, 
And then once you have completed that trustee ballot, please raise that ballot up in the air so we can come around and collect those ones as well. Has everyone had their ballots picked up? Uh, thank you, Marin. John, would you help Marin count the, the ballots? With that, we're going to move into cash drawings for children under 18. They must be present. Good morning. If we could have all the kids, once your name is drawn, if we could have you gather over by the registration table by Tom, he will go ahead and get your picture taken. <laughs> we'll draw our first name, Colton Porter. Colton Porter. Okay. Miley Porter. Maybe also outside. <laughs> Gerald Munson. Casey Porter. And our last name, Michaela Porter. Thank you. You know, it's, it's important to have the youth here at our meetings and to become involved and understand what we're doing because they are the future of our co-op and our communities. So could I have a round of applause for all those young people who are here? Thank you. Move into old business. Is there any old business come before the meeting at this time? Seeing none, is there any new business to come before the meeting at this time? Seeing none, uh, I guess I'll ask again if there's any questions or comments from anyone uh, about what has happened today or anything that you have in regards to Triangle Telephone. If not, I would entertain a motion to adjourn the meeting. We have a motion. Is there a second? We have a second. Discussion? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. aye. Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. The meeting is adjourned. We are going to do the prize drawing now before we eat. And thanks everyone for coming. Just a second. What's that? Yeah, and we will announce when Marn is done. I shouldn't have probably adjourned the meeting, but I did. Uh, the uh, winners of the trustee election and the bylaw amendments, how they fared. Thanks, Maya, Tom. Uh, all of you that received prizes, be sure to go home and tell your friends that did not come to this meeting that you won several prizes and maybe next year they, they will attend. Uh, I'm gonna give the winners of the trustee election and also the bylaws, how they did. Uh, when I'm done giving the winners, any of the, the trustee or any of the candidates that wish to come speak, whether they were the winner or not, is welcome to come forward. So in District 1, Doug Lowry is the winner. District 2, Liz Work is the director. And District 6, Dave Schwartzbach is the winner. And for the bylaws, they passed uh, by 
to 13% and 4% was unreadable. Uh, for a total votes of all of the meeting was 1,344 uh, ballots and in person were turned in. So if any of the uh, candidates wish to speak now, go ahead and come up. If not, I guess we're ready for food. And again, thanks everybody for coming and have a safe trip home.